Welcome to a very hot and fun travel day here on Next Level Adventures. We're going to be leaving Ratchaburi province through Samut Songkram. We're going to visit the floating market. It's going to be beautiful, trust me. I've just been and it's next level. And then me and Dreamy, we've actually made it all the way to here, Kanchanaburi province and these incredible, beautiful temples on this mountain. But the journey to get here was fun, so I just this is a travel day video that you're gonna enjoy. Sit down, relax, as we travel through three provinces in Next Level Adventures. Wow, okay, roll the intro. My name is Paddy Doyle, and this is my little Honda dream, and welcome to Next Level Adventures. Right now, we are attempting to visit every single province in Thailand. We've had some incredible adventures already, but the best part is we're only just getting started. So subscribe and join us as we discover this incredible country together. Good morning, it's, uh, it's like 6.30 and before we go to the floating market, um, and feel free to skip through this next few minutes if you're not interested in audio <laughs> or um, some sort of channel behind the scenes stuff uh, because um, one of the things that I want to talk about because you might notice it today moving forward for a while is the improvement hopefully of audio so let me explain um, I'll get the stuff so yeah basically you know I'm a one-man production team and um, it, it, as I'm traveling through Thailand I'm dialing in all of the little you know, areas for improvement, fixing the kinks in my armor. Um, and so recently I decided to stop using my Panasonic camera because I, I was getting a lot of um, comments and I was seeing it as well, you know, the autofocus was broken and um, I dropped the camera so many times that it just wasn't working as well as it should. And it was affecting the content. Also the audio jack broke on this camera. So we put this camera to one side and we got the Sony ZV-1, a smaller, cheaper camera. And the Sony has been amazing except, and you know, I feel like I should tell you because I do recommend people to buy this camera, except there was a problem and that was the audio. So basically when I stopped using this camera, um, I was using this Rode microphone, this big, ugly, stupid thing, this big fluffy thing. And um, I, was, I had this on the top of the Sony, except like it keeps like, you know, well, for starters, it looks like this. It looks ridiculous. And also, when I was walking around, it was shaking. And uh, I think it was tapping the top of the lens and making a tapping noise. And it was driving me mad. So I ditched this one and I got the Fuji, the Fuji film, um, you know, external microphone. And I thought that that looked really cool. And it didn't have the silly wind muff and it looked really minimal and I was really happy with this microphone and then it started making like tapping noises again. How's this? Can you hear me in the wind? How about when I turn it around? Is it enough to make people click away? Or does it sound if you put it on a tripod, it's fine, but I walk around and I, I twist my camera around and it was picking up loads of really annoying tapping noises. It was driving me mad. And, oh, and then I went to the onboard uh, audio. Where's the thing? I was using this. This is the like little wind muff that just clips onto this camera over the internal microphone. So you don't have to use any external microphone. And I thought, brilliant, I'm, I've, I've fixed it. There won't be any tapping. There won't be any uh, vibration coming through the shotgun mic. It's gonna be perfect, but it wasn't perfect. I mean, have a look at this um, shot from yesterday when I was in the cave. And um, looks like there's some information here. And um, seems to be quite a big, long structure. You know, you can just hear all that like clicking and, and, and vibrations of when I'm touching the camera, when I'm holding the tripod, when I'm moving. And it just, I hate it, I hate it. So I decided to get the Saramonic Lava Mic, Lava Mic system. So look, this is what it looks like. I'll just have this in my pocket, right? You see this? So like a lavalier microphone. And then it comes up through my shirt and it's just plugged here. And you know, I'm not going to have this when I'm climbing up mountains and doing jungle treks because it'll get caught on 
twigs and trees and I'll just break it but um, I'm hoping for 99% of the videos that I make having this lav mic clipped onto my shirt or my jacket just let me vlog without any audio issues anyway that's the audio thing so let me know if you notice the improvement I hope you do because I'm trying my best to make the show as good as possible and the second thing and this is for people who have a next level adventures uh, t-shirt specifically the ones with the um, Thailand map on the back sometimes I look at the map of Thailand and I get really blown away by how big Thailand is and how little we've traveled but when we color in the provinces have a look all of the south is done except for Phuket I'm sorry Phuket we'll go there soon we're gonna be knocking out two more because we're gonna go to Samut Songkram right now to go to the floating market have coffee have breakfast but Samut Songkram Samut Songkram is tiny it's tiny so we'll just go for breakfast and then we're gonna go to Kanchanaburi oh and if you want to pick up one of these and support the production and help pay for the new mic and everything um, check the description thank you So I've come to Ampawa Floating Market. However, there are like three or four floating markets in this area, in this province. And I've come to the one that's open at night time. <laughs> I didn't realize, I just spoke to the people. You see here, Ampawa Floating Market. Let's walk over the bridge so I can give you a closer look. As you can see, people would be dining here and there would be a lot of activity here on the boats, but this is not until the night time. But that's okay because the morning night market is only 10 minute drive from here. This place looks like it would be really lovely and really picturesque actually in the evening. So that's a shame. Maybe we'll come back here on the way back towards Bangkok later on the series. But anyway. There's a guy killing it on karaoke over there. Yeah, so I just checked on YouTube. I was like, you know, what did this place look like before COVID? And I just found um, a video from Mark, from Mark Weens. And it kind of looked like it was a little bit more busy than this, but not much. So this is like a really local floating market. And you can tell because they're not selling souvenirs or any of that usual tat. It's all vegetables, fresh wholesale as well. And there's lots of Thai people coming here picking up big, big portions and bags of vegetables to take back to their restaurants. And I wonder if this canal system goes all the way to Bangkok and this is just the most efficient way to get their produce from the city to these villages out here. And I love their little boats and the way that they have an oar and they just paddle along and their little hats. <laughs> it's so cute. They're so cute. Oh, this is cool. And I also got a really delicious bowl of noodle soup. I tried to show you over there, but it was so loud. Mmm. Man, that, um... That bowl of noodle soup was so spicy. I put too much chili in and then the chili hit the back of my throat and I started having a coughing fit 
and I started sneezing and everybody thinks that I have COVID now. <laughs> so, so yeah, anyway, I've got my uh, ice cafe and then these are really good. These are called, I don't know what they're called, sorry actually, but they're mini coconut puddings. Coconut milk and then they fry it. It looks like they put like a little bit of carrot in there or something. That actually every single one of these uh, coconut puddings has a different filling. So this one looks like it's got taro inside. This one has got sweet corn inside. Can you see that? <laughs> I'm so tired. This is a little surprise. It's tiny. It's only a couple of hundred meters long. And you'd only need to come here for an hour, you know, get breakfast, have coffee, see what's going on. But the locals love it here. They're singing karaoke and everyone's buying their veggies and getting their breakfast in their cafe. And it's really nice to see. And they even have hot pans on these boats and there's ladies cooking people's breakfast. And on the boats themselves, they've got all kinds of jugs and jars of goodness. There's someone cooking pad thai, there's someone making some sort of fried egg dish. This is so Thai, I love it. You should come here. Come here in the morning and soak it up. Okay, uh, a stone's throw away from the uh, floating market. I checked on my map. You guys recommend some really great places and this is no exception. Now it just looks like a tree, okay? And it is just a tree. But inside the tree is a very special temple. Let me take a closer look. Let me uh, go on Google and find out what this complex is for. Because the description on my maps was Go to the temple inside the tree, you won't regret it, so. This temple is built on the location of a famous battle in the 1700s when uh, the Ayutthaya dynasty fought off the Burmese. The Burmese tried to invade and they won the battle here. And to commemorate that, they have statues of Buddhist warriors and the army and the generals. And then they built this temple to celebrate. And um, it's a banyan tree. And since they planted it, it's grown around and over the temple itself. Obviously they planned that, but the people who built it 300 years ago, I wish they could see it now because this thing has grown and this thing has absorbed the temple. It's coming around every corner, it's going through the windows, it's gone through the roof. It's actually coming out to the sides here. They've put scaffolding up almost to stretch out and create a bit of shade. This bit's really funny. So you can come here with your family and take pictures with the, um, you know, Mom, take a picture of me strangling the Burmese. And look, my sister's biting his arm. <laughs> there's a lot going on here. You can see the birds and the squirrels living in the tree. And then there's little statues of Buddha here and just lots of little relics. Um, I went inside as well a minute ago to get a closer look. And the ambience inside there is magical. You can't capture it on camera. Come here and feel it for yourself. And the statue was covered in gold leaf. And he's not 100% covered yet, so I think people come here, they donate money and they get given some gold leaf and then you can rub it onto the statue and it'll stay on there. And eventually the Buddha statue will be covered in gold. There's already a couple of the statues, the smaller ones covered in gold, but the big one still has some patches to go. It's cool to see all the life-size statues of the warriors and they've even got face masks on nowadays, which is funny too. They've got their really nice music playing. There's people praying and putting incense. The monks are walking around. 
This is a special, special little temple. This is what I keep saying when you come to Thailand, if you find yourself getting templed out, that's because you're going to the same types of temples over and over. Make sure you choose special ones, grand, interesting, intricate ones, haunted temples, uh, temples in trees, temples on top of mountains. Make sure you mix it up a little bit. Otherwise, yeah, you know, just like churches are the same and mosques are the same, temples become the same, unless you find really interesting, unique ones with an interesting story like this. And um, look, we've done the, the market, we've done this temple, and that's Samut Sankram. This place is tiny. It's tiny. I've driven around it all morning, and that's it, we've done the whole province. Um, it's about a two hour drive to Kananchaburi. 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 Kananchaburi province. Big, big province. We'll be going there now. It'll be take me about two hours to get there. We'll have a little look around Kananchaburi. Kananchaburi. Because it's so big, and I'm so excited to go there. But Samut Songkram, you little gem. Oh baby, I love your madness. It's so incredibly beautiful. Oh, you shine like gold, so selfless to all. And wild like an animal. Oh, some would say I'm just love to play in your fun and your games Always hungry for more, that's just how I was born Take me somewhere I don't know And give me your freedom Whoa, you love me to pieces Yeah, I need it, won't you bend them on me on Life is so easy Whoa, you love me to pieces Yeah, I need it won't you bend them on me? Something incredible behind me. Let me just. Should we get lunch here? Look, look at this. Hang on. Ready? If I turn around, you see this temple on that hill, mountain? Isn't that beautiful? Um, we'll take a look, closer look at that tomorrow when it's not boiling hot, in the middle of the day. Let's grab some lunch here. Let's absorb the views of this beautiful temple. There's quite a few Thai people here, which is good. And then, uh, then we'll go find a hotel. Yeah, that was a really good drive, actually. Just got a little bit hot towards the end. It's like 12 o'clock, middle of the daytime now. It's boiling. And um, this is a really good looking pad kapow. It's not minced chicken, it's like proper bits of chicken, lots of green chili, carrots. And then the holy basil, they've actually deep fried. So it's actually deep fried holy basil. It's very crispy, which is quite different. And then look, they've got a really cute little blue flower on the rice. Isn't that cute? Anyway, enough, enough of jibber jabber. Gonna eat this, have a nice lemon soda, enjoy the view for a little bit. And then I think town's about another 15, 20 minute drive and then we'll find somewhere cheap and easy. We'll have a shower. We'll take a well-deserved nap. It was an early start today. Kanchanaburi, by the way, looks incredible. 
absolutely incredible. And the next two, three, like I said, maybe four videos, I don't know, are gonna be based here. This province is massive. Can't wait to find out more about that temple structure. We'll go there tomorrow morning. Can't wait to go up into the mountains. I can't wait to do all sorts of stuff. The bridge over the River Kwai, a lot to do here. Anyway, let's just quickly taste this with this fried holy basil. I'll let you know how it is, because it looks like one of the best pad kapows I've ever seen, but how does it taste? I like their twist on it. And instead of having a fried egg on top, it's boiled. It's delicious, and with this view, you can't complain. And it's the same price as anywhere else. It's cheap. Mm. Yeah, with that boiled egg in there, just adds a lot more creamy texture to it. Mm. Give me your freedom.